I've got a hypothetical question for all of you before I try to answer our titular query. What makes a god? Do they have to create worlds? Must they have domain over reality? How much influence do they need over the world around them in order to be considered as such? What's the difference between a minor deity and a major one? All big questions, all of which need to be kept in mind while discussing today's SCP. Hello fellow friends and philosophers and welcome back to the most mind bending channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your voice in the void, Keegan Hughes, and today we are tackling a question of potentially biblical proportions. What if SCP-343 was real? Before we delve deep into the diaspora, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more world changing inquisitions. Outstanding, let's get started. If we're going to answer our main question, first we have to know exactly what SCP-343 is, and for that we'll go way back to the early days of the SCP wiki. 343 has been around a long time and is referenced in a plethora of entries and tales across the SCP universe. The influence and cross-reference popularity is undeniable, so get used to him being around. He can be best described as a male humanoid whose appearance changes depending on who looks at him. It seems that this is tied to the beliefs of the beholder, having him appear as whatever deity they believe in. Currently this fellow is under Foundation custody, but only because he wants to be. As it stands right now, 343 is totally uncontainable. This is likely due to the fact that he claims to be God and can really do whatever he wants. Like, he literally claimed outright to be the creator of the universe. To prove this to researchers, 343 walked right out of containment and returned moments later with a burger. In addition to other shows of power, his cell is now fully furnished, crackling fireplace and all. Nobody Nobody knows how it came to be that way. As odd as this all may seem, especially the willing confinement bit, the artist formerly known as God actually seems to be a positive influence on the foundation site he's at. He enjoys speaking with people and often encourages folks to visit him. Armed with the knowledge of all topics, 343 consistently improves the mood of visitors and keeps morale high among staff. This happens often, even when security has been ordered by foundation supervisors to keep visitors away. The guards assigned to 343 are usually very lax, letting people through with reasonable that usually boils down to, you know he likes company. Who are they to deny a god a few friendly chats per day? Why would god just hang out at the foundation though? Why isn't he actively helping folks keep SCPs contained? What's really going on here? There's no real answers to any of the above questions, but there is more information that might clarify some points for y'all out there at home. The main addition to make here concerns an addendum added to the current containment procedures. You see, even though this entity is 100% uncontainable, he only warrants a safe rating. If anything else were to be so difficult to contain, it would definitely earn a Keter classification, which seems a little fishy, right? Well, back to that addendum I mentioned a second ago, there seems to be a major gap in some of the documentation concerning 343. The records that would usually be kept in the file are not available, and the doctor presiding over the original report seems to never have existed. It's like he was just plucked from the world and placed somewhere else. No staff seem to remember any Anything about the doctor, even though little tidbits of information are still around if you look. In a heavily redacted and corrupted file, it's possible to piece together a tale of a doctor attempting to disprove the god in their confinement cell. The doctor in question was suspicious of 343's motives and what the visitors were up to when they were in his cell. After some snooping and digging, the doctor resolved to confront the entity, but shortly after disappeared without a trace. Negative traces, considering the massive memory gap within all of his colleagues. So we've got an uncontrollable, uncontainable creature calling itself God and it's only classified as safe. Something's up. A popular theory floating around postulates that 343 is not actual God, but instead a powerful reality bender with a God complex. Which lines up pretty well, right? Just hanging out, doing nothing, claiming all sorts of insane things but being able to back them up. Shifting into different images based on the beliefs of his visitors, inviting people to chat while also showing off how godly he truly is. Plus the disappearance of a suspicious doctor and the strangely lenient classification lead people to believe that this reality bender thought the doctor was getting too close to the truth and as such took care of him. It's not too far fetched. However, this brings up another conundrum. If someone can bend reality to their will, who's to say they aren't God? Even if this individual didn't create our universe, he seemingly has the power to tear it down and create whatever he wants. Potentially only on a small scale, sure, but the reality bending qualities of this lad make me wonder how far he could take it. If he can't totally reorganize our universe, maybe he can create a smaller one and rule over that instead. That kind of power makes them a god in some regard, right? What do you think of this conundrum? Could a person with reality bending powers change the world in such a way that they become god? 
Ponder that while I bring us back to the original question. What if SCP-343 was real? We can think about it in two ways. One, take 343 at his word and accept that he is the creator of the universe. If that's the case, not much would change. He would continue to hang out in his plush foundation containment cell and shoot the breeze with all sorts of agents and researchers and doctors. Maybe he'd change something every once in a while, maybe not. He seems to be pretty contented to let the world be and just live in it for a while. The second option is to see him as a reality bender with a big head and be very, very afraid. The thing about people with too much power is that they tend to very much dislike it when somebody questions it. By making this video, I am openly confronting 343, calling him a broad. If that's the case, I guess I'll just disappear like the doctor. Three, two, one? Huh. Maybe he's more chill than I imagined. Even so, that much unchecked power isn't a good thing. He could make massive changes to our world and pass it off as the way reality has always been. We're all essentially playthings, waiting to be manipulated, put into different scenarios based on his will. Every once in a while, somebody might notice an odd occurrence too, kind of like the Mandela effect, where people remember the same thing differently. It could be that the imperfect reality bending of a false god left behind some trace of the world from before. Fun way to explain away the Berenstein versus Baron Stain bears conundrum. I suppose there wouldn't be any way for us to know any better regardless, except for those rare cracks in the veneer. So if 343 was real and was playing God and was goofing it up a little, we'd be in the same situation we are now. Not as world altering as I originally expected. So what do you think? Is 343 actual God or is he a reality bender playing God? Is there really any difference? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more stunning ones from What If Jack the Ripper Was Caught. Vladimir Putin says, yes, early. Vlad, baby, don't you have a country to run? What are you doing here learning about Jack the Ripper? Kudara says, we found him. He was some Polish barber, I forget his name. Well, yeah, DNA tests and info from the time seemingly pointed towards the Polish barber, Aaron Kamansky, but that really doesn't change too much a century later, hey? Sen says, if you got ripped, you get jacked. Damn, bro. Jack out here getting shredded. Big gains for all the serial killers. Welch asks, what if they had CCTV, DNA testing, and advanced police training in 1888? That's a very interesting proposition. They would have probably figured out who was behind the murders a whole lot quicker. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I burst like a balloon, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more scintillating stories. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.